hi everyone welcome back i missed you all last week friday but i'm happy to be back with you so today we kickstart our discussion or studies on physiological factors that affect literacy development we would have looked at some other factors that affect literacy development within the home factors within the school and within the home we would have looked at parenting parental style would have looked at linguistic background within the school would have looked at the beliefs of teachers would have looked at the school environment all of that now today we're going to zoom in on those biological factors that may or may not be affecting literacy development so we're going to kick start this week's study by looking at this argument about boys versus girls does gender play any role in literacy development so let's start with some facts it's a fact that roughly 781 million adults worldwide cannot read or write. Of that 781 million, nearly two thirds are female. Okay, nearly two thirds are female. So we tend to say, oh, it's harder for the boys to be literate, but the data actually shows that more females are in the illiterate population now before you say oh yeah that shows that men are brighter or yes it shows that females might be struggling with literacy no let's not look at it this way let's zoom in on what is causing more females to be amongst the illiterate group that we have so the disparity is more noticeable in less developed countries in which women are often expected to stay at home and care for the house and children while the men go off to work. So that data is coming mainly from developing countries where the men go off to work and the females stay home. And of course, that creates a culture where more females um, are encouraged at a younger age to stay home rather than go to school. So the developed nations of the world have much higher literacy rates with smaller gaps, if any, between the genders. So when we compare the more developed countries with less developed countries, the gaps in literacy rates are smaller. So we have found that in developed nations, if there is any gap at all in terms of literacy rate between genders, it's very minor. So on, on a whole, within the literate population worldwide, boys are not doing much differently than girls, by country that it is. But there are nearly two-thirds of the females, near, but nearly two-thirds of the world's illiterate population are females. And as I, I explained, the factors that cause that. What we have found though, and this is factual based on research, that during the first year of life, gender is not observed in language development. That is, boys and girls show similar development in language within the first year of life. So by the time we pop out of the womb, we do generally the same as it comes to language development. You may be saying, why are we looking at language development? Well, remember from previous well, remember from previous lessons, we already established that the essence of literacy development is how we view language and how we use language. So language development is at the core of literacy development. But in the first year of life, gender, is, gender doesn't seem to play any key factor in language development. That's what the research has proven. So we are born equal as it relates to language development. Nothing is generally different. And next week, we will look at some other physiological factors that might impede our literacy learning even in the first year. But if you just look at gender, we came out equal in terms of language development. However, 
from the second year in our lives, that's when we start to see the difference in terms of rate of language development. So if this is also factual. Research has proven that by the second year, girls show better speech development than boys and girls show greater mastery of speech sounds and talk more fluently than boys. So we would have looked at our building blocks of literacy and we would have highlighted that of the six strands of literacy, five have to do with language development primarily, how we use language. And we would have also looked at the fact that phonics is an essential part of language development and phonemic awareness. So if girls are showing greater mastery of speech sounds, and if girls are showing better speech development by the second year, it would appear as if by year two of our lives, girls are more predisposed to be good literacy learners or more inclined to develop more naturally in literacy learning. However, that doesn't mean that girls are predestined to be more literate than males. Because as we said, especially in developing countries, the rates for literacy with females versus males, there's a big gap where two thirds of our world's illiterate population are female, two thirds. So evidently, although the males would have seemed to got slower in the second year of life where literacy development is concerned by adulthood most men would have been outshining females where literacy development is concerned okay now let's look at a bit of how boys learn differently because that's a critical issue that's a critical factor an understanding of how boys and girls learn differently will help boys to develop their literacy competence more easily and if we understand how girls and boys learn differently we will also be able to pace our girls well so that the margin is smaller when they get older where literacy learning is concerned now we're going to take a look at howard gardner's theory on multiple intelligences because that's essential to understanding how to assist our boys to gain mastery in literacy at an earlier age and how to get our girls to continue on the same path of literacy development that they may have been set on. According to Howard Gardner, he is an American psychologist who primarily deals with development goals. So he looks, he's a developmental psychologist. He has done extensive work in understanding how we as humans learn. He has a set of learning styles. There are eight of them. And here they are, linguistical, verbal, logical, mathematical, visual or spatial, bodily kinesthetic, musical, rhythmic, interpersonal, intrapersonal, natural. Would have met the word interpersonal and intrapersonal from previous lessons. And intrapersonal has to do with how you relate to self, speaking within self, that self-talk. And interpersonal is how you relate with persons who are around you. Now, if you notice, some of these are naturally more geared toward language learning. So as a learner, your style of learning or your preference for learning may be to go about working things logically in terms of mathematically. You might be the one who loves to move around and that would be bodily kinesthetic. You have to have hands-on things to learn better. Or you may be the type who is more intrapersonal and there are some boys who prefer this style just to sit alone and figure it out on their own it doesn't mean that you have one style one learning style you could be pulling on multiple now if at the core of literacy learning is language development and we already know that by the second year of life the females have a tendency 
to do better at speed zone, then naturally more of our boys will be less inclined to be linguistic learners or verbal learners. So if we understand this, then parents who have toddlers will have to understand that, listen, what it takes for me to teach a girl in words, perhaps I need to make it more visual for the boys. Perhaps I need to let them move around and give them hands-on things, give them music, let them beat it out, let them try to talk it out, although they're not more inclined to using words at that stage. And we're not saying, okay, Boys find it difficult to work with speech. Some boys find it work to speak. No. So we're going to put it on the back burner. No. It means we have to make more effort in more creative ways to get them to speak from early to get them to process these speech sounds. Now, others may say just understand the person's learning style and always give them what they desire. So if boys are more logical, mathematical, then give them more things to reason out and then ask them to speak about what they have reasoned out. That will encourage the verbal aspect. However, when it comes to the school environment, teachers need to be mindful of the fact that if they have more boys in their classroom, it simply means the talking, talking, talking won't assist them so much. They need to have more hands-on activities. They need to allow the boys to move around more, probably help them to beat out things, probably let them experience things naturally. Just give them that discovery learning approach to learning. And maybe if we understand this more as parents and teachers, we will understand the, how differently boys and girls learn and we will try to pace our lessons accordingly with them. Now, as I close this week, what I want us to remember that we cannot measure how a child is brilliant or not. We cannot truly measure that. And as Chuck Grassley says, what makes a child gifted and talented may not always be good grades in school, but a different way of looking at the world and learning. Let me repeat, what makes a child gifted and talented may not always be good grades in school, but a different way of looking at the world and learning. So as we look at how gender may affect literacy development, let's all consider how to bring out the gifts, the talents in our children, whether it's a boy or a girl. They have different ways of viewing the world. Let us encourage them to view the world in different ways, but to do so, let us allow them to experience the world in the way that they're most comfortable doing so. Enjoy your weekend, folks. See you next week as we will delve deeper into other physiological factors that may impede on literacy learning. So next week, when we return, we will talk a bit about health. We'll talk about mobility and we'll talk about cognition. How do those affect literacy learning? 